squirrel shooting, do you really need nearly £2,000 worth of kit just to go and shoot some squirrels? Or would something costing around a quarter of the price do the job just as effectively? In today's episode, you're going to find out. We have plenty of new stuff for you today, we've got ourselves a new hide as well as a new gun. The feeder is the same, it's just in a different location, and a beautiful location it is too. We've got ourselves an early start, all we need now is a couple of grey critters. This of course is Team Foxer. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're a fan of this type of content then please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you're new and you like what you see please consider subscribing. So today I'm going to introduce to you a new rifle to the channel. I specifically set out on a mission to find a quality hunting package that was just as effective at shooting and killing prey as this package here. I think all in with the ATN 4K scope on top of the FAC uh, rated air arms with a bipod, the mod that goes on this and the extra bits and bobs, um, you're not going to get a great deal of change out of £2,000. So I wanted to significantly reduce that budget and see if we could get the same effect. So a week or two back I had to go and pick up some more ammunition for my foxing rifle. So I made a quick phone call to MGR Guns at Woodall Spa and was able to arrange a socially distanced click and collect for the ammunition I needed but also, and crucially, pick up this. It's an Air Arms S200 .22 calibre single shot PCP air rifle for just less than £500. I've also been able to top it off with some pretty good quality glass at, again, a very reasonable price. Speculatively browsing the Scope Shack UK Facebook page, I found this Hawk Vantage uh, 4x16x44 side focus scope for 100 quid. Um, I think that's a bit of a bargain, as these scopes normally retail for around £200. Now, I could have reduced that cost even further by going for a scope without a side focus. However, I do plan on using this rifle to shoot um, at night time, so a rear add-on is always much better rather than one that's at the front because they can be a little awkward and they can also when you're moving your hand around the front of the scope impede with your sight picture. The only extra thing I've put on it is a cheap bipod off of eBay so all told this package comes in at around 600 quid. But how does it stack up to almost £2,000 worth of rifle? I say we get down to the farm where we meet a slightly tired looking foxer looking for some greys. Enjoy. Nope, that wasn't me taking a dump in the woods. That was me back on the 6th of December selecting a tree and a position to put my new feeder. With the help of my little foxer friend, as soon as I'd got the feeder in place, I topped it up a quarter of the way up and then left a trail of breadcrumbs going in both directions back to the pot of gold on the tree in the hope that I would attract plenty of the bushy tails. Less than a week later, the feed was going down fairly regularly, so I started topping it all the way up. I also, during the cold snap, put some extra grain and feed down there for the songbirds to keep them fed through these harsher times. On this particular chilly morning that I went to top the feeder up, I spent 20 minutes observing the wildlife going about its business and I also observed several greys coming down to the feeder and feeding for quite some time before venturing off again. It was at this point I checked the weather for the following week and we looked like we had a good enough snap for me to be able to get a morning session on the greys. So I came back fairly early the next week for my visit. Ha! <laughs> 
Ha <laughs> ha! The famous red chair. Right, let's get into the hide and crack on with some squirrels. Oh, by the way, I look tired because I went out foxing the night before. Whoops. Well, thank you for that lovely introduction, Robin. Yes, I'm here in the squirrel hide with the new rifle in this new location. The only changes I've made to the rifle for the shoot itself is added this pullover real tree camo sleeve just to hide the black bits of the end of the rifle sticking out of the hide and I've also added the pard 007 so that you guys can get a scope eye view of the action. So please sit back watch and I hope you enjoy if you do don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and press that subscribe button for more content. The day before I shot the squirrel feeder, I actually went to check on the feed level and then zero the rifle in. I always like to make sure I zero at the location I'm going to be shooting. It was a tiny bit high, but a couple of quick adjustments got me a six shot group all within the space of the bullseye. And as you can see there, it's pretty pinpoint accurate. That grouping there, barely bigger than a peanut itself. The pellet of choice is the JSB Exact Jumbo Diabolos. Uh, they're a 15.89 grain pellet and the good thing with this being a single shot is I can select the pellets uh, with the best skirts. That will give me again um, very consistent shots. Right, it's squirrel shooting time. Within 20 minutes of my arrival, the first customer of the day gingerly makes his way down the tree. I did spot him coming from trees further back and that's one good thing about shooting at this time of year. You've got good visibility into the woods behind the feeder. He's a little cautious, but that is most likely the GoPro you can see there that's only about a foot and a half away from the feeder. I'm not too sure if the squirrel has seen me in the hide moving, but he pauses for just that little bit too long. Making sure there were no other squirrels around, I went out to retrieve it to make sure I was still pinpoint accurate, and I think that's fairly conclusive. As I get ready to prep another pellet into the chamber, one thing to note about the single shot is the pellets rise a little bit as you probe the bolt home. So as you can see here, it just lifts the back of the pellet. So what I uh, found the best thing to do is just put your finger in and push the pellet forward and then probe it home with the bolt. As I notice some movement in the background, the adrenaline starts flowing as squirrel number two slowly makes his way through the canopy to my location. Now, this one was also a little nervous, so spent some time moving up and down, whether he got scent of the previous squirrel or, again, whether it's the GoPro. I soon removed the GoPro, though, because it actually stopped working. Nevertheless, it didn't stop me bowling this one over. He hung on for a short while before eventually letting go. He certainly got a good thwack.
two down. While we wait for number three, check out what I did the other night. That's right, we've been ratting. Everybody's favorite quarry. Sure. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the action. Easy sleep too. Before I know it, number three's in view. He's actually already at the feeder but I hadn't remembered to probe home pellet number three. Whoops, schoolboy error. So I'm trying to do it gingerly whilst keeping an eye on the squirrel. Get the par turned on and get ready for the shot. So it was just as the squirrel took his last peanut, I was just about ready to take the shot. I lined him up and as the woodpecker comes in for a feed, the squirrel decides, nope, I'm not happy about that. Bugger, I think he's seen me, I'm not too sure. So as I take the third squirrel with a perfectly placed headshot in the upside down position, squirrel number four was actually already in view. I just hadn't quite seen it. It goes up the tree and starts barking and making some noise. As I get ready to turn the camera off, that's when I hear it. So although this squirrel is on the neighbouring tree, it's still only a couple of feet further back than the feeder. I'm quite comfortable with the distance, I just need the squirrel to stop moving long enough for me to be able to thread a pellet straight into the brain box. absolutely stone dead and barely a flinch. I think this is fairly convincing. This gun is every bit as accurate as guns costing quite a lot more. Well that last squirrel there uh, was on the tree. It goes against my usual um, goes against my usual principles of taking them off the tree. I like for them to come down and get settled but 
it was moments after I'd shot squirrel number three and that one was on the floor expired so I saw the squirrel come in and I thought it had run off because it had seen me but what I didn't see was there was another more dominant squirrel so clearly that squirrel had thought oh, I better get off the feeder and let, let the more dominant squirrel come and feed which it did so we dispatched that squirrel off the feed and that was squirrel number three and number four ran up a neighbouring tree it's only a couple of extra feet behind the feeder so I was still fairly confident in the range and I wouldn't normally take them off the tree um, and even though in the edit it will probably look like it was only a few seconds it was a couple of minutes up this tree uh, tail flickering away barking, chittering um, he, he clearly very agitated um, and I, I was on it for a little while um, I'm in an hour and I couldn't take it initially anyway because there were branches in the way um, so I had to wait for it to manoeuvre itself into a clear spot and then take the shot and it dropped like a stone but yeah something I do get asked quite a bit is is when's the best time to shoot the feeder well there are a few signs you can look out for first one you may have noticed from some of the close-ups that the squirrels will actually take off the outer shell of the nut uh, the pith if you like and you'll often find that discarded all over the floor and on the feeder itself so that's one clear sign of evidence that squirrels are on the feeder secondly if you've had your feeder there for some time you should notice the pattern of nuts if the nuts are going down rapidly it's definitely squirrels if they're not going down that often it's probably birds taking the odd bit here and there and one of the third signs you can look out for is actually markings on the trees is in the V of the tree and every squirrel that's come to this feeder so far has taken that same route um, they come down the tree they sit in that V flick the tail around and, and, he, and he, they've actually worn they've actually worn some of the moss off of the tree so you've got a very clear evidential line uh, that the squirrels take to come down to the feeder so that's the third way the fourth way you can tell is to install a trail camera so in summary, there's no real right time. Sometimes it can be as quick as two weeks, and other times, like this one, it can be a couple of months. Sometimes you've just got to be patient and just do it when you think the time is right. As the morning progressed on and the sun rose to become almost an annoyance in my face, the wind also picked up. Squirrel number five, very jittery indeed. As you can see, I've completely removed the GoPro here, but by the time I was ready, um, having set the cameras up and got ready with the rifle, this squirrel bolted away just as quick as the previous one. Now he did this another two or three times before finally settling long enough for me to be able to squeeze off a shot. Now it wasn't going to be easy but once he arrived for the third time I would be ready. I had to thread the pellet just over the shoulder blade to get into the back of the brain. With that squirrel thrashing itself out of the way I didn't feel it necessary to go and pick it up straight away so to pass the time I took a couple of shots on some twigs uh, and to see if I could hit the string again at 20 yards and as you can see it's a pretty good test for accuracy this so it's what you call pellet on pellet Here's another novel way of checking your zero point from your hide. Um, I like to use these Birchwood Casey 
um, shoot and see targets. As you can see, here's one I shot earlier when I got here this morning. How I attach mine um, to the tree, because they won't just sit there, they'll just fall off. So what I do, is put a bit of string around the tree and then wrap um, a thickish a thickish twig around that. So you want it relatively loose or loose enough so that you can get your target in there. Wrap that round and then all you need to do is twist your twig. Push your twig. And there you go. You can there you go, you can shoot that several times and that's not going anywhere but it is the perfect distance from your hide and you can also see very clearly where you've shot. Well thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content you can follow the instant action on Instagram with team underscore foxer. Take care, stay safe and as always happy shooting.